Hello, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on equivalent fractions. Yes, this is where factors and multiples come back to haunt you. If you have not mastered your factors and your multiples yet, then stop right now. Go check out some videos, go do some work with that. Make sure that you know all your factors and multiples to 144 before you finish watching this video because it's going to make everything so much easier. All right, let's go ahead and ask it. Why on earth, Mr. C, would we ever want to know this? Well, there's a couple of good reasons. You have to if you want to know how to add and subtract fractions. And you want to know how to add and subtract fractions. Okay, it's going to get you to the next level in math. That stuff's going to be really hard if you don't know how to find equivalent fractions. I would say it would be almost impossible. Uh, so learn this, master this before you move on to that step. Uh, and then secondly, I think when you're starting to learn fractions, it gets really confusing. When you have big numbers in the numerator, big numbers in the denominator, it gets hard to think about these fractions. Well, if you know how to find equivalents or if you've gone through the process, uh, it gets less daunting. It gets easier. So learn it, noob. All right? Cool. Let's check it out. I'm going to show you a few things. There's a couple rules we're going to talk about. I'm going to cut some pizza up into pieces. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the word equivalent. What does the word equivalent mean? It just means equal or the same. Or if you're of the Spanish persuasion, mismo. It just means exactly the same. So if something is equivalent or if two things are equivalent, they are simply the same. Okay, and you might go, what? I don't get it. Wouldn't it look the same then? Not always. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you that a couple times, and I'm going to use pizza. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to look at the fraction two-thirds, uh, as, and, and then I'm going to show you an equivalent fraction to two-thirds. Okay. So here's the rule I'm going to drop down before I cut this up into thirds. So let's go ahead and take this pizza, cut it up into thirds three equal pieces. These are, you know, this one's a little bigger, but pretend like they're equal, okay? So we have two thirds. So if you were to eat two thirds of a pizza, you would cut it into three equal pieces. You should know this by now. If you don't, you're watching the wrong video. And you get two of them, right? Cut it into thirds, that's the denominator. That's how many pieces we've cut it into. And then the numerators, how many pieces we're talking about. Two of them, I've colored them green. Now, when we're finding equivalent fractions, it's a two-step process. Well. Consider it a two-step process because I want you to go through this step first. We are going to try to divide the numerator and the denominator by a common factor. So I want you to look at the, the two that's a numerator and the three that's a denominator and say, is there a factor that these two share? If you don't know what a factor is, again, I will reiterate, you're watching the wrong video. Can I divide two by something and also divide three by that same number? and I get a whole number? No, I can't. So I go on to the second step. I can also multiply them by the same number. Well, that's not so hard. That, that's the easy one, and that's the one kids always do because it's like, oh, it's easy. I'll just multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. You can do that, but when you're thinking about equivalence, I want you to try to find a factor first. It's going to help you in the next step when you start to reduce fractions, okay? So, since, since these don't share a factor, I'm just going to multiply them by the same number. I'm going to pick the number 2 because that's easy, right? I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Okay, what's 2 times 2? It's 4. What's 3 times 2? It's 6. There it is. We're done. 2 thirds is the same as 4 sixths. The only difference being that we cut it up into extra pieces. Look, we have our pizza that's in thirds here. I'm going to cut it into sixths now. How do you do that, Mr. Seal? I just take my thirds and cut them in half. Watch. I've taken each one of my thirds and I've cut them in half. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, sixths. And I'm going to shade in four of them. Wait a minute. There's already four shaded in. Look. One, two, three, four. Do you see? Okay. If I said, do you want two thirds or four sixths of a pizza? It doesn't matter what your answer is. You're getting the same amount of pizza. I just cut them into extra pieces. That's it. That's what equivalent fractions are. Uh, and when you can find them, we can then use them to add and subtract and do lots of other things with fractions. Okay? So if you think about it, it's really not that hard. Okay? I'm going to show you one where we're going to find a factor. Okay? We're going to look at the fraction 4 twelfths. <laughs> 
I'm going to show it to you on a pizza. And remember, I want you to divide the numerator and the denominator by a common factor if you can. And with this pizza, you can. Okay, I'm going to cut it into twelfths. So I start out trying to, I'm going to try to make 12 equal pieces. I'm not always perfect, but I'm pretty good at this point. Okay, there's three. There's six. There's, oh, there's going to be a big piece in that one, but that's okay. Uh, there is nine. And here is 12. Okay, now this might look like a pizza that you've actually gotten before, right? You see the pieces cut into twelfths. Uh, and then we're going to shade in four of them. One, two, three, four. Four twelfths. Okay, so if you're going to eat four twelfths of a pizza, this is about how much you're going to eat. Okay? But we're going to try to find an equivalent fraction to four twelves. And I set this up so that we can actually find a common factor. There's a few common factors with four and twelve. What's a number that goes evenly into four that also goes evenly into twelve? Two. Two's easy. They're both even numbers. But there's another one. Four. Right? So we're actually, instead of multiplying when we're dealing with the, the factors, okay, when we're finding a common factor, we're going to divide. 4 goes into 4. Well, duh, right? Oh, yeah, but a lot of times kids don't notice that. And then 4 also goes into 12 evenly. So if we divide 4 by 4, what do we get? Well, that's easy. If you don't know the answer to that, you're watching the wrong video. And when we divide 12 by 4, what do we get? 3. Whoa. Hold on a second. 4 twelfths is equal to 1 third? Yeah, look at this. I'm going to try to show you. Look. Remember how I cut this pizza into thirds? Look. Thirds. 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. 4 twelfths is actually the same as 1 third. If I were going to say, man, are you, you got to be hungry. I'm going to give you a third of a pizza. You could say, uh, could you cut it into four pieces for me? Because I don't want to eat it all in one giant piece. You'd be getting the same amount. You'd be getting four twelfths of a pizza. Okay? So you, you're going to have to play with this uh, in order to get really good at it. And I would really, I'm going to keep, I'm going to tell you again and again and again, I encourage you to try to find a common factor first. Try to divide by the largest factor you can. Because that's going to get you the easiest fraction to think about. Right? Just look at it. What's easier to think about in your mind? One third or four twelfths? That's a no brainer for me. One third. Right? One third's easy. I cut it into three pieces and I got one of them. Right? As opposed to cutting something into 12 pieces and getting four of them, that's a little more difficult to conceptualize and to actually use. So, so I, I encourage everybody to try factors first. And then if that doesn't work, play with some multiples and start multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And I emphasize, it has to be the same number. See, I divided both the numerator and the denominator by 4. I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 2 over here. It's got to be the same. If it's not the same, the fraction will not be equivalent under any circumstances, ever. So it has to be the same. All right? All right. Let's move on to, whoops. Let's move on to what we learned here. We learned a couple of things. The first one being that you have to understand factors and multiples in order to find equivalent fractions. Again, if you haven't clinched this skill in your brain, you got to do that first. All right, secondly, you usually, not all the time, but usually you wanna look for common factors first and then resort to multiples if you can't find any factors. Uh, and lastly, if you wanna be a black belt in mathematics, and you should, Okay, you got to learn how to do this. It's tough. You're going to use it a lot of different ways, but the more you play with it, the better you'll get. Just like any musical instrument, right? If you practice, you get better at it. Same thing in math. Okay, so let's start practicing right now. We're going to try it. I'm going to give you a couple of fractions, and I want you to find equivalent fractions for them. I want you to find two. And I really want you to try to find common factors. I've set it up so that a bunch of these have common factors and you can use division instead of multiplication, okay? So find two equivalent fractions for 5 tenths and then 
find two equivalent fractions for 6 eighteenths. And then I have a challenge activity for you, because this one's a little harder. Uh, we're going to look at the two, I'm going to show you two fractions here. And I want you to tell me, are they equivalent? Meaning, are they equal? Are they the same? Yes or no? And how do you know that? How can you tell me that for sure you are correct? And you can use equivalent fractions, right? You can use multiplication and division to figure that out. Can you work these fractions so that they look the same? All right, that's, that's my challenge for you. You're going to have to do that in your next steps, right, before you start to add and subtract fractions anyways. I hope this helped. Um, I'll see you next time. We're going to start reducing fractions, which is really finding equivalent fractions, but always using division, um, always using factors. That's the next step. I'll see you next time.